there's a big misconception in cryptocurrency right now, and this channel is going to address it. Because crypto investors, possibly you, are investing their hard-earned money on false narratives built on fake truths, and while I am not a financial advisor, I cannot see the future, thinking that 2020, this next year, will be just like 2017 for altcoins is a mistake. Thinking that the 2017 altcoin gains, the pumps, the mania, will be repeated in 2020 is a mistake. And this might be obvious, but I'll say it. I don't know. I don't know what the price of any altcoin will do in this next year, in 2020, and you don't either. Nobody knows. So like always, let's be smart investors and watch this video to the very end, and we'll look at some of these on-chain metrics for altcoins, for Bitcoin, and zoom in and find out where this market is trending next. Because welcome back everybody to Altcoin Daily. My name's Austin. Hit subscribe. You do not want to miss one of our daily videos keeping you informed on Bitcoin, on altcoins going into this next year. I want to start right here and I want to share with you the story of the global alt markets in a series of charts. This is from on-chain analyst Willy Wu. And the first chart I want to share with you is this. These on-chain metrics are actually from two months ago, but I have an updated chart for you today. So we're looking at altcoin market cap versus Bitcoin market cap. And this is how this chart breaks down. This is the Bitcoin price off of USD. So this is you know an obvious chart you've seen before. This is the altcoin market cap over the last 10 years compared to the Bitcoin market cap. So another way to think about this is altcoin dominance versus Bitcoin dominance. And notice, even though the price of Bitcoin can be hitting all-time highs, we're around 20K per BTC right there, altcoin cap versus Bitcoin cap, altcoin dominance can be hitting all-time highs as well. Because even though Bitcoin is popping off, the altcoins during that time were popping off a lot higher, a lot harder. And two months ago, we showed you this, but there's this trend line, this 6.5 year trend line that's acted as support, very critical support, and that brings us to where we were two months ago, hitting the 6.5 year trend line, support line. At that time, two months ago, Bitcoin, the price of Bitcoin was on its way down from 14K, now down to what we know as was the 6K, 7K. But at that time, Bitcoin was falling from 14K, was around $10,000 per BTC then. And the altcoins, they were falling a lot harder. And if we look at this support line in the last 10 years of cryptocurrency, Every single time the altcoin cap hit this support line, we bounced off. In 2014, close to 2015, and 2016, and right before the run-up of 2017. And we hit it two months ago. People were expecting it to bounce off. After all, we were vastly oversold. This was the RSI two months ago. So let's bring it to today and find out where we are with this 6.5 year support line today. This is the live chart. I'm gonna link all these down below in the description. But this right there, that's where we were two months ago. This is where we are now. So it looks like we did bounce off it. RSI is at a better place, not too far in one direction or the other, although we do still have this trend down. But if we put the support line on, where does that bring us to today? Well, it turns out that we're still at a very critical point right now for altcoins. We're skimming around this trend line. And we have never known life under this trend line for the existence of altcoins, which is short. But where we go from here, whether that being up or down, could be very critical when it comes to the price of these alts into 2020. So this is where we are today, with the price of one Bitcoin being around $7,400. Many people are speculating, expect the price of Bitcoin to drop lower before we rally up higher into 2020. And if Bitcoin would have a capitulation like breakdown into the 6K, into the 5K range, I'd expect Bitcoin dominance to keep increasing, go closer to the 75 or 80% Bitcoin dominance mark, in which case these altcoins would drain harder. Now, if that happens, we don't know what life would be like for these altcoins below this support. We have never seen it before. And this could vastly affect which altcoins because there's going to be very few that actually have that value for gains in this next year. If you're finding value, if you appreciate this type of content, hit like, lets me know I'm doing something right. But if I could just offer a little bit more perspective with a different chart, here's the same data visualized on the price domain. 
the total crypto cap market capitalization priced in BTC supply. If that doesn't make sense, I'm going to show you this in a second. It's the same chart uh, visualized differently. The 2017 gap that opened up, which I'll show you in one second, well, that was made of Ponzi fluff. Now, what's that mean? That means ERC-20 ICOs investing in other ERC-20 ICOs blowing up their combined caps like a fiat money printing machine. Here is the chart I want to show you. The yellow line represents the price of Bitcoin and the dotted blue line represents the total market capitalization price. And notice for the vast majority of existence, there was no gap, very minimal. What BTC, what BTC did, altcoins did pretty much until the ICO boom of 2017, where this gap widely opened because you would invest in one ICO, get those gains, invest in another ICO. And it was essentially like printing money. In these last two years, we've seen that deflation. We've seen these lines slowly, at least very slowly, actually, uh, become more like what they were pre-2017. But notice where we are right now, the gap still exists. I like this. I like this perspective. Now, what does this mean to you going into 2020? Well, from Willy Woo, fundamentally, those alts are screaming in pain. These two charts show how, how they have not yet detoxed from the 2017 bubble valuations. Though locally oversold and may see some bounce in the coming weeks, longer term into 2020, I can't see these levels holding. What do you think? Me personally, I'm not gonna make any rash decisions until I see we break clearly above or below for any extended amount of time, this 6.5 year trend line. That's me. Now, this being said, I wanna challenge you. I still think there is heavy potential for certain altcoins going into this next year, as long as we realize that 99% of alts will fail. They will. So I have an announcement for the channel. If you're a subscriber to this channel or an audience member, in the next 10 days, I will be making a top six altcoins for 2020. As I usually do, I actually listed some altcoins that I thought were good to watch into 2020 about two months ago. Well, in this video, I wanna call on you. We have, we have captured a vast audience here at Altcoin Daily. The audience of this channel is smart. They do their research. So in this community vote, I want you to comment down below. You can do this on here. I will also send out a tweet on our Twitter. There's a link down below. And vote which altcoin, and be specific, be choosy, which altcoin you see having real value in 2020. Now, I know what you're thinking. You're saying, Austin, I subscribe to this channel for your, your perspective. I don't care what the audience says. And you know what? That's exactly what you're going to get because the top six altcoins, the top six altcoins that you choose, get ready for my perspective. Get ready for me to be ultra critical in sharing with you the benefits and the criticisms of each altcoin that makes the top six in a nice, concise 10 to 15 minute video. I'm gearing up for this to be the ultimate list of 2020. So comment below and just do me a favor. If you're going to pick, this isn't a rule, but if you're going to pick more than one altcoin, say you like XRP and Hex token or Chainlink, whatever you like, leave it in separate comments. It's not a rule, but it just help, will help me count. So if you have two altcoins, two separate comments, that, that'll just help me. But in about a week, expect that video. So make sure you stay tuned. And that's the video for today. Uh, my name's Austin. Hit the like button. And before you go, if you want to stick around, let's just look at this other thread from Willy Woo going into the altcoin market. And this is just one man's perspective. But if you have time, check this out. A thread on altcoins. They are nuanced, right? There's different altcoins. We have protocol coins, utility coins, security tokens, or in many cases, unregistered security tokens, and non-fungible tokens. Different coins that you can invest in. But according to Willy, to an investor, there's only two types of altcoins. There's oscillators and degenerators. And you can spot them on this chart of the entire market. But again, the oscillators are the ones that go up and down and up and down continually. And the degenerators, they're the ones that just start high and continue to go down. The vast majority of altcoins are degens, shown right here. Their price chart has a measurable half-life, like radioactive decay, plotted on a log chart. It's a straight line down. This one is Namecoin, which used to be in the top 10. New alts are in the top 10 now, but Namecoin was a promising coin of its era. And there are over 2000, of, 2000 examples of coins like this that are degenerators. Now a handful 
of altcoins are oscillators. Oscillators are proving their store of value property. Which coins are oscillators? Well, I would say that XRP, Litecoin, they remain in the top 10. And even though Litecoin, for example, lost 95% of its value since the 2017 bubble, I'm sure it might go back up again. No guarantees, but in the past it has, just like XRP. To qualify as an oscillator, they need to keep up with their BTC USD gains. It must oscillate around a horizontal line for at least one full bull bear cycle around four years. More cycles are obviously better. So this is a uh, chart of Litecoin, Stellar Lumens, and Dogecoin. And as you can see, yeah, oscillation. So like always, as you're commenting, commenting below, as you're picking your list, if you plan on being in altcoins, here's his rules of engagement. It's critical to determine an oscillator from a degen. Oscillators are good to enter and exit to stack more BTC. For example, as critical as I've been on XRP, rightly so in these last two years, I'm not doing this, but maybe you would say, hey, it's down so much in the last two years, maybe it'll be an oscillator like it has been in the past. Maybe I'll jump in. So pick the oscillators, never hodl a degen, period, get the F out, and be careful on the coins younger than one full cycle. And just for perspective, in the top 10 right now, uh, Litecoin, XRP, Oscillator, Bitcoin Cash, EOS, any of these generation three DAP platform cryptocurrencies, not a lot of time to really make that decision, whether they'll be like the alt, like Namecoin in the top 10 for years and then out, we'll get maybe new ones in three, four years, or whether they'll be the oscillators. So you tell me. Anyway, that is the video for today. My name's Austin. Like always, I'll see you tomorrow.